I'll say this, this movie really makes me want to be an actor, because I would just love to play some random DC obscure character that I am 100% sure is real that is going to be killed off in a Suicide Squad movie. That would be bucket list filled. Let's all go watch the review. another review. Today we are reviewing The Suicide Squad directed by James Gunn. This is the movie that he made when Disney was like, we don't want you anymore. Be gone here. You said something bad in a tweet a long time ago. Oh, actually nobody cares. Come back for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh, you've already signed on to do Suicide Squad. Well, after that, come on back. So yeah, suicide, the Suicide Squad, not to be confused with Suicide Squad, because that's just the way you do it. You just had a THE in front of it, and all of a sudden it's an entirely different movie title. Batman and a THE, now it's THE Batman, and it's a completely different movie title. I'm surprised the next Spider-Man movie isn't going to be called THE Spider-Man, instead of just, well, to be fair, we've had a few <laughs> Spider-Man. Anyway, let's focus on the Suicide Squad movie starring Margot Robbie, and, um, everybody else, there's just too many characters. We'll just go with Margot Robbie and Viola Davis, and that's all we'll talk- Oh, and Sylvester Stallone, but I'll get to that later. So, the Suicide Squad movie just starts a place, takes right off, no lead up, no nothing, just right off into a mission of the Suicide Squad. They're going to the island of, uh, Coton Maltese, I think it is. It's a, a comic island, it's been in the comics for a long time, I believe it's where- I was going to say that's where uh, Bane comes from, but I think that's Santa Prisca, actually. But I don't know if that's the name of the prison or the island. Anyways, uh, you know, they're on a mission to do a bunch of it. they got to figure out... Oh, John Cena, he's also in this movie. But, as I say, I won't go through all the cast because there's just too many. So, this movie... It's in the Suicide Squad. It, it, you know, they're going on a mission, and bad stuff happens. People die. Stuff blows up in their face, and they see all these criminals that usually don't give a crap about anyone whatsoever, they're like, well, you know what, I'm just going to, I guess, have to be on this mission to save the world or whatever it is, I guess, you know, we're not supposed to. To be good guys, but I guess I have no choice to have a bomb in the back of my head. So, who do we got? We got Idris Elba. Oh man, I'm remembering all the cast up. He plays Blood... Uh, uh, Bloodsport? Bloodshot? No. What is it? Okay, it's Bloodsport, but to be fair, Bloodshot is also a character uh, in the comics, uh, but not DC or Marvel. But anyways... I got him confused with Deadshot. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Confused the two black characters. Anywho's, you know, it's funny because when I heard about that Idris Elba was coming in, I just assumed he was taking over the role of Deadshot. But I actually like what they did here. They go with, um, like, this movie, besides Harley Quinn and Captain Boomerang and some of the other characters, most of the villains that they choose are really lesser known ones. Like, these are not big name villains. It's just Harley Quinn as the main, then we got uh, Bloodsport, we got uh, the Rat Catcher, the Polka Dot Man, and this is what was missing from the DCU. This was the thing that was missing from it. Grabbing the weird and embracing it. You know, this is what it needed. More of this because we didn't need flipping, you know, Man of Steel was like, oh, I couldn't save my father who was dying from a tornado. Or what is the inner meaning of blah, blah, blah. Look, 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 we get it. The Dark Knight, Batman Begins are all great films. Not everyone can be Christopher Nolan. Don't try. You know, when it comes to superheroes, we need to get the craziness and the weirdness of the DC Universe into it and go with it. Run with it full force. Don't get me wrong. There's places for epic characters like Wonder Woman, if done right, in the first one. You know, but, but also, the world of the DC Universe is a weird one. Embrace it, DC. Take this flag and run with it. So yeah, I like this movie a lot. It takes, it's, it's dark, it's violent, it's disturbing, but it's also cool. The stuff that these characters do is really nice. It's really cool. I like all the characters. They're all a bit wacko. They're all a bit crazy. And yet they're just, 
They're fun. They're fun to hang around with. Sylvester Stallone as King Shark is so hilarious because I was watching the opening credits for the film and I saw Sylvester Stallone. I'm like, oh, Sylvester Stallone. I wonder who he plays. And then I kind of forgot about it until the end credits. Then I'm just like, wait a minute, who does Sylvester Stallone? King Shark, you idiot, of course. It's, King Shark is a fun character. He's dark. He's, he's uh, violent. He's disturbing. But he's also... He's dumb as a rock, but he's also really fun with how dumb he is. You know, he's like, you know, he keeps on trying to do so. Here's the, uh, I'll get, no, I'll get into that, the spoiler part of the review. Uh, so, Sylvester Stallone and King Shark is a lot of fun. We got some returning characters, as I say, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Her character, I'm, I liked her in this movie. She's still Harley Quinn. She's still fun. Margot Rob Robbie still is killing it as the character. I like the way she looked in this movie better than she looked in, like, Birds of Prey or whatnot. But I will say that uh, Margot Robbie as uh, uh, Harley Quinn in this movie, she's kind of like sidelined off to the side and only then comes with the rest of the movie. And they do poke fun of that. They do have some good moments with that. But it's actually a lot of focus is on Bloodsport and the Rat Catcher. This Rat Catcher 2, actually, which is actually the name of the Rat Catcher 2 in the comics. It's the second one. It's just Rat Catcher 2. Uh, but they take it in a different way with it. I believe Ratcatcher 2 is not a woman, if I'm remembering that correctly, but not, hey, Bloodsport isn't black either. I thought, you know, it's funny, I thought it was like, hey, they took a lesser-known black character and made him, uh, and made him popular, but then I looked it up and was like, oh no, Bloodsport was also white. But it's different because nobody cares about Bloodsport. That's the thing about me, is like, if you take a character that nobody cares about and changes, change it around to something more interesting, then I'm okay with it, you know? Do whatever you want with it. Nobody cares if you change Bloodsport from white to black. Uh, but Deadshot with Will Smith, I was just like, but it's not Deadshot. And Deadshot will never be the Will Smith character in the comics because he's not black. But nobody cares about Bloodsport. If you give him an identity in the movies that's more compelling than a character that nobody really cared about in the comics, then yeah, take that, run with it. I'm all for it. Go with it. Uh, same with like changing a, a character from a man to a woman. Like I always said, like there was this character, this character called Copperhead. I always saw him in Justice League the animated series, and he was just a guy with like a snake hat. And he always looked the dumbest. He always looked stupid. And so when I heard that he was going to be in uh, Arkham Origins, the video game, I'm like, oh, great, that dumb character? What did they do? They changed it around. It was not a uh, actual snake-like person. It was a woman who had, like, uh, toxins and chemicals and could contort her body into weird ways. That made the character... Her level in, in Arkham Origins is actually one of the, the better ones, and uh, I was finding all, her character really interesting. And say that's what I'm saying. If you want to make a character from a guy to a girl or black white to black, do it. Just make sure it's a character that, you know, it's, it's you know, that you can make more interesting because of it, through that process. Anyways, uh, enough about that. Uh, but he, uh, Idris Elba is blood sport. He's entertaining. I like, like, I thought they were kind of doing just a retread, like, oh, here's my character. It's like, I'm a bad guy, but I have a daughter that I really care about and whatnot. And I'm going to do whatever I can to make her proud of me. And that's not what they do at all, really. I mean, he and his daughter hate each other. Like, he has no love for her. He's just like, I didn't even know where you existed until your mom dropped this on my lap. And now I have to deal with it. Well, I'm in jail. So what do you expect me to flip and do about it? And she's just like, well, hey, you're my dad. And I don't like it, but whatever. Like, I, flip and hack. You know, it's like... But there is a little bit of a progression the way his character goes through the story. How he develops his relationship with the rat catcher and how she has a different story. And, I, I just, and, and all the characters are flawed. But the action in this movie is so good because there's, it gives every character great, cool moments. This is gory. This is not a movie you take your kids to for a superhero movie. This is called The Suicide Squad. That's a dark title, and it earns that title with this movie. There is blood. There is gore. There's decapitations. There's splitting people in half. And it's just fun. It's super fun.
Now, I want to say that uh, I, I want to give a quick rating of this movie. If you are interested in this at all, or if you're just like, I don't know, the last Suicide Squad movie wasn't that great, is this movie going to be better? This is a good movie. This is a movie that embraces the weird, cartoony side of the world of comics, but also just rolls with it and is, has fun with it and just totally just goes super crazy with it. And so that's why I think that if you are a fan of comics and wanting to see it, more into the craziness, but taking it seriously, this is definitely the movie for you. I am giving The Suicide Squad a... 7.5 out of 10. I think that uh, it's close to being a great movie. I just think because of the, the way, in the subject matter of the movie that it is, it, it can, it's not like a mind-blowing movie. This is just a fun action movie that you're going to go through and you're going to thoroughly enjoy. There are some... Problems I have with it here and there, but it's really small in comparison to the whole big picture. So yeah, now we're going to go into the spoiler part of the review. If you haven't seen this, I really want you to see it before you continue on. Uh, so yeah, there's your spoiler warning, and here we go into it. I will say that what they did with Starro was super interesting. Because, first of all, I really wish they hadn't spoiled what, that it was Starro, you know? I mean, Starro the Conqueror is one of DC Comics' most weirder things. It's a starfish that shoots tinier starfish that control you and has a big eyeball on it. It's weird, but I like the way they took it. It made it disturbing and crazy and a little bit wacko. And I think it's also a little bit of a message, you know? It's like, we're starting the DC mu mu uh, the, D the DC movies over, starting now, this is what they're going to be like, you know, Cause, because Star of the Conqueror, if you did not know, is the first villain that the Justice League ever fought. And so it's an interesting thing, it's like, hey, it's a new beginning, but the DC has tried a lot of new beginnings and they haven't always worked, but who knows if this one will. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see, you know, Starro come out in here, but the way that he's is super disturbing. like. Like, how Starro will grow the more people have him, but they have him, these these people have him controlled, and it's like the controller being controlled, and it's super crazy, because the like the, there's the scene where the thinker takes him to his lab, and there's just like a Starro on somebody, that the Starro's on the head, but they have no legs, and they're obviously is like the bot, but it's still like re trying to reach out and escape and attack. But it can't, and it's just like, this is messed up. And there are some s s twists or turns that I didn't think was coming. Honestly, Rick Flagg's death shocked me. Like, I don't know why. Like, I should. Uh, some of these deaths shocked me, and I'm like, I should have seen that coming. Like, Jai Courtney's death as Captain Boomerang, I was shocked by that. I shouldn't have been, really, because in all the promotional trailers, he's just in that big shot in the beginning where they show all these characters, and then everything else, they just show Rick Flagg, Peacemaker, Idris Elba, Harley Quinn, like, he doesn't show up in anything else, and so the Dedoy should have clicked in for me. But, that's kind of suck when you're just like, hey, you know that you were a big part of the last movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is going to be great, right? Yeah, mm, apparently nobody actually cares about you as an actor, and so we're just going to kill off your character, period. What? Yep, you're just going to die. Oh, sucks to be you. I don't know, I feel like there wasn't any place for him in this movie, and they just decided to kill him off because, of, hey, they killed off a character from the last movie. That means the only surviving characters from the first movie that we know of is Deadshot, and Harley Quinn. Oh, and Katana. Katana, uh, I guess she didn't die and she's still unaccounted for. But yeah, I, I, did Killer Croc die? I haven't watched Suicide Squad since it came out in theater, so uh, yeah, I don't even remember. But anyway, <coughs> Harley's part in this movie where she gets captured in the beginning. I don't know why Waller wouldn't just blow her head off if she got captured. I mean, like, I thought the whole point of it was to kill them before they got, you know, taken into custody, but I guess she figured, like, hey, as long as she's captured, she can be, you know, useful to us and maybe break out and kill some of them. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little cr uh, weird that, you know, Harley Quinn 
doesn't die early on in like in the big part because like the first part of the first attack team that they went and Waller set them up to die okay that's what she did she sent that team to die what a screw you to Rick Flagg who's been working with her for through thick and thin and and whatnot because she sent them there to die I mean sure she sent them to rescue Rick Flagg but she could I mean maybe Rick Flagg doesn't have a bomb in his head so maybe he doesn't she can't like kill him but yeah, it's uh, but yeah, like like she sends him up to that. Now that scene where Bloodsport and Peacemaker are just wiping out that village, and uh, and King Shark it just ate them, and you find out that they're with the resistance, and they're like they had just murdered like twenty of the resistance of the good guys, and you're just like I got, I was feeling it. I was like. I don't know if these are bad guys. I don't know. This doesn't feel right. But the fight scene was actually still pretty cool because there's that scene where just like a guy's laying down and Peacemaker's just walking by, casually stabbing him with an axe. And I was just like, holy flippin' shoot, that is cool. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, John Cena's Peacemaker is actually really good too because. Uh, he's a little bit crazy, but he's also, like, a, a determined patriot. It's one of those things where it's just, like, uh, I, I, like, I kind of get this character as someone who's, like, peace at any cost. Now, it's a joke, you know? It's like, I will kill so many people for peace. Is that mindset so outlandish in today's society, the, what people will do at the lengths that they will go to? I don't think it's all that crazy compared to what other people have said. Now, he's in his own uh, spin-off show, and I was like, I knew that going into this. So when he got a bullet through the throat, I was like, I guess this takes place before this. And then it was like, oh, we pulled him from the wreckage. I feel, that feels to me like a thought of after scene where it's just like, you know what, John Cena was really good in this movie. Let's give him his own TV show. But we killed him off. I will just say we found him in the wreckage. It's fine. Because come on, a bullet through the throat. Through the throat, and he lives? Who found him? Who's digging around out there after everything that just happened? Anyways, and honestly, I can see why they want to use John Cena as, as, uh, as a, give him his own show, because, like, it plays directly into John Cena's strength. You know how, like, John Wick plays purely into Keanu Reeves' strengths. He's not, doesn't have to have a lot of emotional range, doesn't have a lot of range to his acting. He just needs to do a lot of cool fight scenes and is really good at it. It's the same with John Cena. John Cena is not the greatest actor out there. He doesn't have the greatest acting chops. He is very cheesy in a lot of ways, but that fits the Peacemaker character perfectly. A guy dedicated to his beliefs, but is also kind of clueless. Amazingly skillful, but woefully inept in terms of basic communication and common sense. And that's why I think it does make sense to give him his own show. And I think I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm actually looking forward to seeing how they work. I hope the show doesn't uh, go too... I, I don't know, I, I just say there's a direction you could make the show where it just becomes, you know, uh, Trump propaganda or whatever, but I think if you've done it right, it could do, it could, uh, do really, really well. There's just a lot of characters, like the Polka Dot Man, who you probably noticed this, I definitely did as soon as I saw him. He's the Arkham inmate in The Dark Knight way that Harvey is flipping the coin and pointing the gun at and telling him to tell him where the Joker is. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess that just means the Polka Dot Man was in the Dark Knight. That, that, to me, this is like a prequel to that. Like, uh, the Polka Dot Man in the Dark Knight, that's my head cannon. That's what I'm going with. That's how I feel. But he, he was really good in this movie, too. I mean, the way his character played off somebody who was deranged and insane, the thing with his mother was absolutely hilarious. And I was just like... Oh my gosh, this is this is crazy but super funny. And the ah, uh, he the way he died, like when he's like, I'm a superhero, and I'm like, ah, oh, he's dead, he's totally dead. Wham! But he got to live out his dream for even a few seconds. He got to be a hero. Um, 
Viola Davis is Amanda Waller in this is still great. She is, has that cold stare eye. I love the scene where, like, uh, Bloodsport pulls out a pen on her and it puts it right to her throat. She doesn't even flinch. She is a woman that's so confident and so good. Viola Davis, I still think, was the perfect casting for her. She still plays it now. I love the scene where, like, Bloodsport turns around and he's walking back. She is yelling at him. Because that's a Waller, too. That's Waller, too. She can be cold, calm, and collected, but when things don't go her way, she gets pissed. And yeah, I just, uh, I still would say CCH Pounder, Justice League Unlimited is the the best Waller, just because I, I think she's allowed to go, she has more stuff to do, but I mean, for live action casting, I don't think they could have done better than Viola Davis, because she's just so good. I kind of wish that the, because like when the credits for this trailer of the film came, they were like, oh, look at all these people, and we knew that most of them were going to die, I just wish that it wasn't like... Most of them die within the first five minutes, and then... So it kind of makes a point. I kind of wish there were, like, a big group that slowly, slowly died off as the missions went on. I wonder if they could ever really do that. That would just take a lot of work and a lot of characters to follow through, even in the background, but... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but still, it, the beginning scene with them all getting wiped out was pretty fun. Weasel is weird. Uh, that's just a weird thing. But not as weird as Nathan Fillion's character. Uh, Nathan Fillion is a Canadian actor you know from Firefly and whatnot, but his character's powers, TDK, where his arms just come off, I'm just like, that is the most useless power. Really. I mean, honestly. I, I, the most. Idris Elba as Bloodsport, I guess he's, he, I would say he's actually a pretty good main character, and I think he does really well, actually, because he's kind of playing the stoic, like, I'm just good at everything kind of guy, but they give him an interesting playoff with, uh, with Ratcatcher of him having a phobia against rats, and this big, bad-arse guy is like, all right, we're gonna, oh, there's a rat, you know, and he literally has a moment where he does an audible girly scream like that, and it's so funny, because he's just such this... It's just Alba, you know, this this big manliest of all men, and he's just terrified of rats. And the rat catcher too, I find her super interesting, and super fun, and I actually really like the message that the movie signifies with her. I I just think that she's great. Uh, and as I say, say King Shark Creed, I like all all of these characters, even if the ones that they don't get to do anything for very long, they're still a lot of fun. I would just say that uh, yeah, the Suicide Squad movie. I would say. It's either the best or second best uh, movie. And honestly, it feels kind of like a rated R Marvel movie. And I know that's, you know, a little you know, like, <gasps> don't say that. But I remember I had to remind myself, oh, wait, this is a DC movie. This isn't Marvel. It's just James Gunn has that Marvel style to his filmmaking. And at the very least, but he was able to change it up. You know, it's rated R, so it's a lot different. It's a lot more gory. It's a lot more, you know, there's F-bombs and stuff like that. The places they go with some of this stuff is crazy. Uh, Peter Capaldi is the thinker. That guy, like, his, he doesn't have a whole lot of scenes, but the scenes he's in, like, he does a great job. It was hard to look at him, though, as such an evil guy. But I'm so used to seeing him as the doctor, but... In any case, I mean, I, I'm just going to wrap it up. I think the Suicide Squad movie might be either the best out of all of the DC movies or second best to maybe only Wonder Woman. Uh, I think it's definitely in the top two. For sure. Not that I'm ranking this. Whoa, I'm not going to be doing a DC ranking list. Hey, uh, if you want to check out a ranking this, though, I did a ranking on all the X-Men movies. You can check that out. I don't know why I'm plugging that. Anyways... Uh, so yeah, I've given my review. I think this is a very good action movie. The best movie I've seen all year. Let me just say that. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, I'm Lazy Dude. Thanks for watching, everybody. And don't die. Be sure to check out some of these other videos on my channel. And wait for more coming soon.